Hello, YouTube. I'll be covering the uh, Canadian Computing Competition 2014, which is the junior version. I'll be covering uh, problems one and three, and then four and five will be in the description below. So this is just a general overview of the competition. This these may not be the most efficient solutions, but these are the way that I solved them and I got perfect on the contest. So for problem one, this is triangle times. The link will be in the description. It says that basically what you have to do for this problem is you need to look at all of the angles and then you just use some simple if statements to determine. So say let's make an integer and let's say side one equals integer dot parse int and then we do end our read line. So we use our end our read line from this standard input and we parse an integer. Next up let's take another variable and let's parse it again. This will be our second side length. And now let's take our third side length. And we're going to do the same thing to this one. We're going to parse the side length. Now, what we have to do is we have the different side lengths. And, we know, and it gives the conditions if all three side lengths are 60, output equilateral. So if side one, equals equals 60 and then side 2 equals equals 60 and then side 3 equals equals 60 and then we're going to output system dot out out dot print line and we're going to say equilateral meanwhile else if and then side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 equals equals 180 and so in order to be isosceles and exactly two of the angles are the same so side 1 plus uh, equals equals side 2 or side 2 equals equals side 3 or side one equals equals side two. It went out, but I saw sleeves. I saw sleeves. Now we're going to continue. I'm going to do another else if and do if side one and side two and side three equal equal 180. And we're going to say that it's scalene. Else, we are going to say that it is um it is an error. So this is pretty much the solution for the very first problem within the CCC. It's just a very simple if structure, and then you use a buffered reader inside of it. So now let's head over to the second question. The second question is basically a vote count, and essentially how to approach this problem is you need to use the char right command. And it tells you how many votes there are. So we're going to start by typing int and then we're going to type in vote number. And you don't actually need this integer, but I'm going to show you how you can do it. Regardless, so integer up our send and our read line. Now we're pretty much going to have in here, we're going to have um, int a, a equals 0. I'm going to also declare b. So inside here, let's have a for loop that will go through every single character and determine how many votes there are. So for this, we're going to go up to vote number. Or similarly, we can go to the length of the input. So string votes equals end our read line. We could do votes.length. So inside here, we're going to say if if votes dot char at i equals equals to a then we're going to um, add one to a vote for a else b plus plus and now we're going to output so if a got higher than b then we're going to say that 
then we're going to say that a else if b got higher than a then we're going to say b else we're going to say tie so let's try this out and see what happens so it's currently running let's try 6 and then a b b a b b and then it says that the winner is b so that is correct so this problem works also now let's continue on into problem j3 this is a little bit more complicated so pretty much what we have to do is we start off with the first line so int int and then we're going to have sessions equals integer not parse int and our read line so now we parse this and now we're going to use a string tokenizer so essentially what the string tokenizer does is it splits it off into different tokens and each token represents a word so new string tokenizer and we're going to have a string read and we're going to have this in a for loop so we're going to loop this in depending on how many sessions there are Loop this like this, and source and inside here, and our read line. And then, furthermore, we're going to say that um, first player dice, so let's declare int um, player 1 equals 100, int player 2 equals 100. So, we're going to say that int dice row p1 equals integer dot parse int st.next token. So this gets the next token within the string tokenizer and this stores what the first player rolled and then next we're going to do a dice roll player 2 equals integer dot parse and st.next token. So now we get both tokens from both sides of the string and now we're going to say if dice roll p1 is greater than dice roll p2 then we're going to say that player 2, so player 1, 1, so player 2 equals player 2 minus dice or player 1. Else, if dice else, and since we don't want a nested else if, we would use else dice roll p2 is greater than dice roll p1 then we're going to just subtract from player 1 1 minus dice roll p2 and then at the end of this cycle we're going to add a system dot print line and then we're going to output the player 1 value and then we're also going to output the player 2 value so here we have this all the code and now we're going to run it and see what happens. Now it says that there's an error. So whenever you use this, you have to import java.util.asterisk. So run. And now it says that there's been a mistake here. There's one E. And now let's try this. So four, five, and six. And then they try it six and six. And they got four and a three. And then they got five and a two. 94, 91. And that's the answer. All right. So this is J3, thanks for watching, be sure to watch the other video which will cover problems J4 and J5. Thanks for watching.